guys, just adjusting my earphones. Okay. Hi everyone. Just adjusting my earphones. Let's listen to some music and calm ourselves down. I've had a busy morning, so I'm still quite flustered, and I know that the spirit does not work when I am flustered. <laughs> so let's just calm down and listen to some music while we're waiting for everyone. Um, when you come in, please say hello. Actually, I'll post it in here. comes to down is listening to uplifting music so it's appropriate we listen to something uplifting just to get us started man give some time for people to come in I know everyone's busy this time of the day is kind of like a busy day is it a good time I mean it's good it's it's a busy time of the day come on now um, is this a good time for you guys to listen to the lives but I know that you can just come in anytime and watch it yourself and I, I do it often too just to you know recap on some of the things that we uh, talk about <laughs> So while we're waiting for everyone to come in, let's talk about some things. Turn the music down a bit. I love this song. Just listen to the music while we're waiting. song I used to play um, uplifting music when my kids come in for seminary they always had music playing in the background like this and just invited a lovely spirit hi honey don't listen to my singing now because my singing is bad but just listen to the spirit of of the song Sing the song. <laughs> I love this song. Do you love this song? I love it. How great thou art. Sing along with me. And sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art. 
I said to my seminary kids one time, oh, when, when I die, you please make sure that this is a song I won't play at my funeral. And they go, oh, don't be silly. I say, no, it's a nice song. I just love it. Let's know the song. We'll start after the song finishes. Beautiful song, eh? Uplifting for the soul. Food for the soul. Okay, so I have the little bit of music playing in the background while we just talk about a few things before we start. And just remind me to say the prayer before we actually start reading. So just a few things to talk about. First of all, welcome everyone. Those who are coming in to listen in after on the, in the replays. Thank you for following. Um, and um, yeah, just... Good to see everybody uh, participating. Now, I, and one thing I like to say about the lives is that I think, man, I think everyone's getting really clever now from from watching. Um, this morning I heard a story about somebody who was sharing with her husband um, the scripture, and then I thought, wow, that, that's just, um, it's awesome how families, you know, it's not just helping us, but we're sharing what we're learning and our interests with others like friends and families, and it's helping them too. You know, one thing that people get um, a bit wound up about reading scriptures, sometimes they think, oh, it's not for me. I don't know anything about scriptures. You know, the scriptures are for anybody and everybody. I uh, don't think you need to be uh, a perfect person to be reading them or to just open them up or look into them or learn something about somebody in there. It, you, it just depends on you know, um, your p reason you know, or your perspective of, of the scriptures, because sometimes people get the idea it's not for everybody. It's for everybody. We're all children of God. We're all here learning together. This is just some help that Heavenly Father has given us. And I mean, that's not just for us, for people who are not of our church, like people who actually, members of the church, some of them still struggle to open the scriptures. Not for us to judge. We just encourage one another to just open them up. We're bringing everybody into the scriptures. Just by running this live, it's doing it. People are getting that interest um, to, to open up their scriptures again. Anyway, um, I mean, that's my little two cents about that. Uh, next thing I'd like to talk about. Um, we did remember the question, the initial post that we did, the question about the trials. Like, what are your trials that you're experiencing today? Now, I know people are looking in there. They're seeing what um, a few people have posted. And thank you, those who have posted. It's quite... Um, uplifting to see that people have courage to talk about their own trials hello I just said we're all children of God and we all make mistakes and what's what what's you know wrong with sharing our trials and and finding out what other people are going through because remember sometimes people are not going through them other people are experiencing your your trials as well and sometimes when you just have do the you know, courageous thing and speak up about them, then people will find out, well, I have something in, you know, common with that person too. So, man, they just solved my problems because I had that problem. And, you know, if you didn't share anything, then you wouldn't know. So I encourage you to go in there into that question, the initial post for the week, the question, and like, what are your trials? And talk about them to say what's happening or what have you seen in other people? What are you noticing today? Maybe not in yourself, but other people. That's how you reach out to people and, and you help them. You know, the, the quiet stuff of, of just saying it silently in your own mind, those voices, you know, that just eliminates that part. Because the negative voices come in when it's just you talking to yourself. So have the courage to speak up, okay? Uh, yeah, and at the same time, thank you to those who are replying to, those who have um, already posted. Okay. 
Um, the third thing I wanted to speak about moderators. Okay, so so we have a few moderators, but I'm only seeing um, like a handful that are participating. Roxanne, you're one of them. Thank you very much for your input. Leilani and, and a few others, right? Now, I also understand that there's not just sisters in here, there's brethren as well that are following. Now, I understand that brethren are very kind of like private in some of the things that they don't want to talk about it. And I need my courageous moderators, <laughs> male ones especially, if you know, come forward and, and add to the discussion on the initial post, please, okay? So when you have time, guys, just pop in there and, and put your two little, you know, little two cents worth um, about trials that maybe males might be experiencing today. Because remember, they're not so open in the things that they discuss, you know, they're going through. Sometimes, you know, they're very private about it. But let's just, I don't think Heavenly Father put us on earth to just be private all the time. Maybe some things we can help each other with, you know, especially with our 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 males or our brethren okay because we're all going through trials like some of those trials might be sickness it could be like job loss it could be health it could be um family it could be you know feeling like you're you're failing or whatever it's just a try and support one and one another and sharing our trials okay hi Matt. hi cousin good to see you Lisa will be in here later on. She's, oh, she, you yeah, know, she should be in soon. We hope. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for following us. Okay, uh, fourth thing I'd like to share. No, I've already covered that. And the tip of the day. Right, tip of the day. Uh, the last two days have been trying to encourage giving everybody a tip and about likening scriptures to yourself. So either find yourself in the scripture that we're reading about or you know, liken it to you or to us today. Now, um, part of that likening is also identifying the enemy. You know, the people we don't want to be like, yes, in the world today. So people in, in the scriptures, you know, there are some people that you know. It's just like exposing the enemy of our day because the book was written for us today. And it's to help us with our own problems that we're experiencing or things that we see around us in the world. So as we read today, I want you to see if you can identify some of the enemy who are around today. Because anyway, I'll go through it um, with you as we go along. I'll, I'll pinpoint, actually I won't even need to pinpoint. I know that you will be, your eyes will be open to see who they are for yourself too, okay? Um, so yeah, we're all at different levels of um, understanding with our scriptures, but I, I hope to think that every day we're building upon, you know, the skills that we need to identify. But you know what? You don't even need to have any skills. You don't need to know anything. You just need to have faith and try and connect yourself to the Spirit because the Spirit will, is the true teacher. The Spirit will tell you all things that you should know and that you should do. Okay, Belinda, is that right? Nani, I think we already had a discussion about that earlier. All right, so in saying that, I think we're ready <clears throat> to jump into it. Uh, yesterday, our, our lesson was, oh, our chapter was Alma 9. And we had uh, a lot to hear from Alma. In today's chapter, we're at Alma 10 and, and we're going to hear from his companion, who is Amulek. Right, remember? Um, so before we do any of that, I rem I'm remembering now to say the prayer. How's that? Okay, so we've got to invite the Spirit. Let's have our prayer. Shh, close your eyes. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this wonderful opportunity we have to come before thee and give thanks and gratitude for this opportunity and time that we've been given to um, to listen to thy scriptures and to be able to listen to um, the truth and that we may be inspired by the Spirit and um, feel edified and we are so grateful for this technology that we have to share with the world and reach out to those who are in need and that we, our, our hearts may be pierced by the message that we hear today 
and we are grateful Father for the, these blessings and mindful of those who uh, are not with us and we pray Father for them and their families and those who are sick and afflicted and poor and the needy we pray for those who are less fortunate than us and help us to reach out to them in love and charity and we're grateful Father for our Saviour Jesus Christ and his example and we grateful Father for all these blessings and open this time with thy spirit and with thy blessing in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Okay, let's get to it. Alma 10. Hey, um, for those who are new, just coming in. Now, we just read together. And then for an hour afterwards, like I'll go off the live. And if you have any questions or thoughts that you want to share, I'm here for another hour and you can just post your comments. As I'm reading, if you want to post something, then go ahead. Or afterwards, um, then we can converse with one another in the live comments, okay? Um, so here we go. Alma 10. You know, I always get nervous with these live readings, but hey, let's just take that leap of faith. All right, chapter 10. Lehi descended from Manasseh. Amulek recounts the angelic command that he care for Alma. The prayers of the righteous cause the people to be spared, and righteous lawyers, judges, lay the foundation of the destruction of people about 82 BC. Right, just to, to get an idea, has, has anyone already read the chapter? If you have, just uh, put yes in the comments I can see. Well, if that's okay if you have it. All right, so... Yeah, let's just go. Because what I was going to say is the questions in here. I'm not going to go with those questions. I'm just going to go with the spirit, okay? All right. So here we go. This one. Now, these are the words which Amulek preached unto the people who were in the land of Ammoniah. Saying, verse 2, I am Amulek. I am the son of Gadona, who was the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Amminadi. And it was that same Amminadi who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple, which was written by the finger of God. So he's just introducing himself, right? Saying who he is, where he comes from. He's a Nephite. Verse 3, and Amminadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came, I oh, see, we know the genealogy from there, Nephi, Lehi who came out of the land <coughs> of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, and who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brethren. Now, sometimes people, just a point here, um, he's just finished telling us his genealogy. Now, a point here. This is evidence that the Bible and the Book of Mormon are connected. The genealogy reaches, <coughs> goes back to um, Joseph in Egypt. Just a little point I wanted to share. Because some people think um, they're not connected. All right, verse 4. <clears throat> and behold, I am also a man of no small reputation among all those who know me. Yea, and behold, I have many kindred and friends, and I have also acquired much riches by the hand of my industry. He's a well-known man. Verse 5, Nevertheless, after all this, I never have known much of the ways of the Lord and his mysteries and marvelous power. And I said, oh, I said, I never had known much of these things, but behold, I mistake. So he's just said that he doesn't really know much of the things of God. He hasn't, and we'll learn more about him. But I mistake. So he's made a mistake. For I have been, I have seen much of his mysteries. And his marvellous power, yea, even in the preservation of the lives of this people. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse <coughs> 6, nevertheless, I did harden my heart. For I was called many times, and I would not hear. Things uh, I would not hear. Therefore, I knew concerning these things, yet I would not know. Therefore, I went 
on rebelling against God. And the wickedness of my heart, even until the fourth day of the seventh month, which was, which is in the tenth year of the reign of the judges, the seven, as I was journeying to see a very near kindred, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, Amulek, return to thine own house, for thou shalt feed a prophet of the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Yea, a holy man, who is a chosen man of God, for he has fasted many days because of the sins of this people. See, I'm a fasted for these people who rejected him. And he is in hunger, and thou shalt receive him into thy house and feed him, and he shall bless thee and thy house. So, uh, yeah, he's just said that he used to be one of those rebelling um, types of people. You know, his heart was hard. And an angel's come to see him. And, and he's telling him, you know, there's a man coming, feed him. He is a prophet, prophet of God. All right, carry on. And the blessing of the Lord shall rest upon thee and thy house. Okay, so Amulek has a choice. You know, what is he to do here? He's actually just telling us what happened to him. Verse 8. And it came to pass that I obeyed the voice of the angel and returned towards my house. And as I was going thither, I found the man whom the angel said unto me, Thou shalt receive into thy house. And behold, it wasn't this same man who had, has been speaking. It was the same man, sorry, um, who had been speaking unto you concerning the things of God. Verse 9, And the angel said unto me, He is a holy man. Wherefore, I know, <clears throat> I know he is a holy man. Because it was said by the angel of God. He's got a bit of faith in there, eh? Verse 10, Because he knows it's truth. The angel has told him truth and he knows it. Verse 10, And again I said, uh, I know that the things thereof he hath testified testified are true for behold i say unto you that as the lord liveth even so has he sent this his angel to make these things manifest unto me and this he has done while this alma had dwelt in, in my house oh, dwelt in my house verse 11 for behold he hath blessed mine house he hath blessed me and my woman and my children and my father and the kinsfolk yea even my kindred hath he blessed and the blessing of the Lord hath rested upon us according to the words which he spake. He only received the blessing because he was obedient. And it was true. The angel was right. Verse 12. And now when Amulek had spoken these words, the people began to be astonished, seeing there was more than one witness who testified of things whereof they were accused and also of the things which were to come according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. So um, it just goes back. How did the people respond to having two witnesses? You know, um, two testimonies that testify of, of God. You know, and this man, when you look at Amy, like he was a known man. So it's more likely that you'll believe this man. I mean, he... I think the Lord knew how hard these people were. And so he had to, you know, Lord, the Lord knows all our trials and that, and he knows how to fix them. And by faith, he was fixing them, you know. Amulek didn't have to listen, but he did because he knew the heart of Amulek and he knew he wasn't a learned man. He knew he didn't know much about God, but he had faith. And so I, I, admi I admire that. Sorry, I'm just rushing ahead. I don't know why. Verse 13, nevertheless, there were some among them who thought to question them. So some did listen and some didn't. Let's hear more about them. Remember, we're looking for the enemy in this story <laughs> and they're coming. Nevertheless, there were some among them who thought to question them that by their cunning devices that they might catch, they might catch them in their words. They're trying to trick them that they might find witness against them, that they might deliver them to their judges, that they might be judged according to the law. So they're trying to make them 
break their laws so they can be taken to the chief judge and be imprisoned. And that they might be slain or cast into prison according to the crime which they could make appear or witness against him. Verse 14, now it was those men who sought to destroy them. Here they go. Who were lawyers. They're lawyers. Who were hired to, who were hired or appointed by the people to administer the law at the times of trials or the trials of the crimes of the people before the judges. Verse 15, now these lawyers were learned. They're very smart. They're learned in all the arts and, and the cunning of the people. And this was to enable them that they might be skillful in their profession. So they're good at what they do. Um, verse 16, and it came to pass that they began to question Amulek, that their thereby they might t they might make him cross his words or contradict his words contradict the words which he should speak verse 17 now they knew not the Am that Amulet could know of their designs but it came to pass as they began to question him he perceived their thoughts he could think what they're thinking man Amulet, you're amazing I mean, he, he's not, see, he's not a learned man. He doesn't know much about the gospel, but look at these gifts that the Lord has given him for his faith. He can think what they're thinking. Shame on them. And he said unto them, O oh, ye wicked and perverse generation, ye lawyers and hypocrites. He's the enemy. For ye are laying the foundation of the devil, who is the master, right? For ye are laying traps and snares to catch the holy ones of God. Shame on you. Verse 18. Ye are laying plans to pervert the ways of the righteous and to bring down the wrath of God upon your heads, even to the utter destruction of this people. See, it doesn't, they probably think they're doing something great, but actually they're just bringing wrath, the wrath of God upon their own heads because it's their mouth that is opening and saying what they're saying and saying things against God. Shame on them. You know, um, I choose not to be them. Verse 19, yea, well, I did Mosiah. See, there's a consequence for your actions. Just saying. Verse 19, yea, well, did Mosiah say, who was our last king when he was about to deliver up the kingdom, having no one to confer it upon, causing that this people should be governed by their own voices? Okay, yea, well did he say that if the time should come, see, he, he, he was a wise king, he was an amazing king. Well, yea, well did he say that if the time should come that the voice of the people should choose iniquity, he knows his people, that is, if the time should come that this people should fall into transgression, they would be ripe for destruction. See, he knew, he knew that his people would fall. Um, that's if they didn't have a righteous king to lead them. And yes, sure enough, it's happening. Verse 20, and now I say unto you, that well doth the Lord judge your iniquities, well doth he cry unto his people by the voice of his angels, repent ye, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The patience, the patience of heavenly father, honestly, Verse 21, isn't he patient with us though? Aren't we like this? Aren't we these people sometimes? Mm, yeah, we are. Verse 21, Yea, while well doth he cry by the voice of his angels that I will come down among my people with equity and justice in my hands. See, he still has mercy for us because he loves us and he's giving us so many chances. But you know, we get it wrong all the time. Throughout all time, we've got it wrong and we will continue to. But he still sends warnings. I mean, how many times have these warnings been given to us throughout all the scriptures? You know, he is a patient. I tell you, my nerves, you know, just, just a point here. My nerves. Now, I've just learned over years, you know, you keep telling, like for us, we keep telling our kids, do the right thing, do the right thing. When they do, don't do the wrong, right thing, it just annoys us. And we think, why aren't you doing it? But look how many chances, you know, the Lord has given us. And yet we can't give chances to our own kids patience long-suffering the Lord is amazing 
you know I just he's a loving Heavenly Father that's what he is okay so did I do 21 let's just go back to 21 oh no I did verse 22 yea and I say unto you that if it were no this is a good point here verse 22 and 23 are very important yea and I say unto you that if it were no oh no look at me I wrote over the T if it were not for the prayers of the righteous who are now in the land that ye would even now be visited with utter destruction yet it would not be by flood as it were the people in the days of Noah see they didn't get a chance did they nope they didn't get a chance and oh actually they did but um, they didn't listen so they got wiped out remember so uh, just go back to that last phrase yet it would not be by flood as were the people in the days of Noah but it would be by famine and by pestilence and the sword verse 23 but it is by the answer oh sorry but it is by the prayers of the righteous that ye are spared yeah now therefore if you cast out the righteous from among you then will not the Lord stay his hand will not the Lord stay his hand but in his fierce anger he will come out against you then you shall be smitten by famine and by pestilence and by the sword and the time is soon at hand except you repent so if it wasn't for the prayers of these righteous people man you people would be godless by now now what does that say about us you know if there weren't any righteous on this look how also how our planet is amazing right yeah but we also have a lot of wickedness and why doesn't the lord just come and wipe it you know wipe us all off the face of the earth why you know i guess he has a plan but if it wasn't for the prayers of the righteous who pray for the the wicked actually by the way i think there would be utter destruction you know but i mean who am i to say it's all in the lord's timing but um yeah there is a question that that you know goes with these two verses it says what can we learn about the influence of a righteous people in a wicked city and so that's um like a thought-provoking question for us for each of us um what do we learn about the influence of the righteous well that's what it is to me i'll come back to that let's just carry on but we'll come back to that okay verse 24 and now it came to pass that the people were more angry with amulek and they cried out saying this man doth revile against our laws which are just so they love their laws and our wise lawyers whom we have selected verse 25 but amulek stretched forth his hand and cried and and cried the mightier unto them saying oh ye wicked turn the page perverse generation why hath satan got great hold upon your hearts that's a question for us today too why has satan got such great hold upon your hearts why will and just carry on why will you yield yourselves unto him that he may have power over you to blind your eyes that you will understand you will not understand the words which are spoken according to their truth why are we blinded today by satan i mean he is a master at what he does uh, he's a professional at what he does he's been doing it all his life and sometimes we say oh no we can handle it my son said that once oh my gosh if i talk about my son <laughs> Okay, let me just let me just pause us here verse 26 before I lose this train of thought now my, my one of my sons I'm not gonna mention his name but he's one he said to me mum I, I said to him be careful because he was hanging around with friends that were not you know from our our faith and from our church but we love everyone so we always accepted all his friends and so he said I we just warned him just be careful you know you might end up doing things that you are not supposed to do and he goes no nah, mom it's all good 
I, I, I like my friends and, and I'm strong. You know, I've been, I've been taught in the gospel, I, I'm strong. And so we watched him and we just, you know, he did love his friends to the point where maybe he just didn't want to say no to them. And that was a hard thing for him to do. Uh, but we respected his, his wishes, it's his choice. I mean, we were guiding him through the process. But, you know, sometimes you feel like you could be the one person that can, you know, be that righteous influence for them. And then, you know, what if you do fall? You know, what if that does happen to you? And, and sometimes it's hard to forgive yourself. And Satan comes in like the egg that he is, and, and he will blind you. He will say, no, you're not good enough now. You're unworthy. Don't even think you can be righteous again. You know, he'll come with those thoughts, but, you know, we do actually have a choice. We can brush him off, yeah? It's hard, though. It is very hard, and I've seen a lot of people, even myself. It took me 11 years to come back into the fold, and so I understand that. I understand how Satan is very convincing believe me and he still tries every single day so um anyway let's just carry on verse 26 for behold i have testified against your law you do not understand you say that i have spoken against your law but i have not but i have spoken in favor of your law to your condemnation so he's not he's not being contentious in any way he's just adding to do you Get what I mean? He's adding to by, I mean, you can be in the world, but you can also listen to the word of God too. Now, what's wrong with listening? And maybe some good will come from, from, from doing that. Verse 27, Now behold, I say unto you that the foundation of the destruction of this people is beginning. They're laying their foundation of destruction is beginning to be laid. <coughs> Excuse me by the unrighteous of your lawyers and your judges. They put their foundation upon the understanding of the lawyers and judges and the skills of, of them. Verse 28, now it came to pass that when Amulek had spoken these words, the people cried out against him saying, now we know that this man is a child of the devil. Man, no good. <laughs> For he hath lied to us, for he hath spoken against our law. They love their law. And now he says that he has not spoken against it. Verse 29, and again, he has reviled against our lawyers and our judges. Verse 30, and it came to pass that the lawyers put it in their hearts, in their hearts, not their heads, their hearts. That's an important thing to think about too. So they put it into their hearts that they should remember these things against him. Verse 31, and there was one among them whose name was Zerizram. Now he was the foremost to accuse Amulek and Alma. Uh, so, yes, we're going to hear all about Zerizram soon in the next chapter. Um, he being the one, he, oh, now let me go, where are we? Uh, to accuse Amulek and Alma, he being one of the most expert among them, having much business to do among the people. Yeah, he's, he's popular too. Verse 32, now the object of these lawyers was to get gain, and they got gain according to their employ. Okay, did you see who the enemy is of that day? <laughs> did they reveal themselves? Hmm. Was it Alma and Amulek? Were they the enemy? I don't think so. Not with Heavenly Father leading their way. Was it the people? Were they the enemy? Um, I don't think they were. I don't think they were. I think they were just like us, you know, trying to make sense of, of, of what is true. You know, they didn't have an understanding of the gospel. So, you know, they're just learning themselves. Um, was it the lawyers? Bingo! <laughs> was it the learned men? Was it the hypocrites? Yes. Okay, so the question is, do you see people like that today, living in our day? And if you do, 
do you listen to their truth? Hmm, there's a lot of stuff going around, going on in the world, and it is a worry because there are some really skillful people in what they say, right? There are some masters of deception. Remember, they are all followers of the devil, of Satan. And remember, Satan is a master at what he does. He is a professor of deceit. So when I say deceit, I mean he can wipe your eyes blind to the things that, you know, sometimes that we do wrong and the things that we say. Because like these lawyers were just openly, you know, opening their mouth and just... No worry in the world, just saying what they say, and really they're just saying their truth. But the way they're doing it, it's a profession. It's not coming from their heart at all. It's it's just, it's something from their head, you know. So, have you seen people who who speak like the lawyers, who speak like the hypocrites, who will find out more about Zia's wrong in the next chapter? I mean, he's another person to worry about as well. Um, and have you also, in saying that, have you also seen people like Alma and Amulek um, who are out there preaching, you know, the word of God too? Have you seen them out there working? And perhaps have you been one of them who have been, um, received their message and maybe not been so sure about it? You know, we're all different. Um, but yeah. Remember, our challenge was to find out who is the enemy of our day. And this is what the uh, the Book of Mormon, it, it was written for our day because the mistakes that they had in their time, they are our mistakes too. And we know, for those who know the Book of Mormon, you know at the end, you know what happens to the righteous when they, you know, get so blessed and they forget the Lord. So I guess the, the book is really teaching us repetitively the same message and in this scripture is is like what the consequence of our actions if you can choose to listen to Alma and Amulek and you know you'll be blessed it says you'll be blessed but then you can also choose um, the other way and, and follow your lawyers hypocrites um, and learned people see it's okay to be learned it's good to know things but don't let that learned um life kind of like give you that prideful kind of attitude where you don't need the lord clearly these people are saying they don't need him and um yeah so a few things to think about i did share a few i did share one about my son and he thought you know even the part where it's talked about the prayers of the righteous will will it's only because of the prayers of the righteous that these people are not utterly destroyed and sometimes we think we can wow um what comes to your mind when you think about that you know the prayers of the righteous can be an influence on people beautiful oh Lynn, you got some thoughts you gotta love amulek you gotta love him once he made the choice to obey God, he was fearless and bold in preaching the truth. Absolutely, because you know, you see, he was quite popular to his, to the people. You know, people knew him. He, he was like, he got wealthy in, the, in his industry, which means he was trading with people. He was quite popular and all that could have like ended by him speaking up and saying, no, I choose to follow God. You know, I've got to love Amulek and he didn't know like he wasn't skilled like these lawyers and that he just knew his work and and when the angel came along it was enough to tell him that okay this is good and it is true i, I will follow that's a brave thing to do in our time you know speaking up for what you believe in that boldness and, and having no fear to speak your truth and which is the truth from god he tells the people an angel came to see me he has no fear in sharing that you know i just can you imagine being that person and, and telling your family and that, or your friends, oh yeah, an angel came and told me that I should just stop doing this and go to church. You know, how will some people take that? How will they look at you and think, hmm, um, what's, what's happening with you? But Amulek was brave. I admire him too. And this chapter has been about him and also the prayers of those righteous people that followed him. 
So, um, yeah, uh, much to think about in this chapter. There's more good stuff coming. I assure you there's some more good stuff coming. You know, stuff on the good and the evil. But remember, we must have opposition in all things. Evil will always be around. Um, I think the Lord is just helping us understand how we should, how we can filter it in our own daily lives. We don't have to take everything in that's happening around the world. Yes, be aware of it. Yes, make the decision. Yes, choose your truth. But, you know, the, the thing, and sometimes people will try and sway you in, in things of the world and say, you know, they will be against what you believe in. Um, but I, I guess, and how do you kind of like know what's true and what's not true? Because I remember there's people in this, in this page who are following who have not known the gospel that we know, um, who are just learning about scriptures for the first time. I mean, so how do you know what is true? And how can you determine that? The world is changing. Um, but one thing I know about Heavenly Father, he does not change and his doctrine does not change. And, you know, and I believe that, you know, when you listen to the Spirit, the Spirit will absolutely tell you the truth of all things. I, I totally understand that. Just to share a little thing with you. <laughs> but over the years of teaching seminar, I've always like, I can only like in my own experiences and, and what I teach. And I've had many and I, I'm not afraid to share it. You know, I also respect my, because I share a lot about what happens to my family and that, because that, that's real to me. And sometimes when I share real experiences and people can relate a lot better, right? So I had this little experience. We've been raising our family. All our three older children are growing up and they're, you know, I, they're, they're great, great kids. You know, I have no problems with them. And our younger one, who is 13 years old, now he just came home last night and we got a phone call. He's been suspended, da, da, da. Now, I think he was like my other older son who thought that, you know, he could be a righteous person amongst his friends. Um, and maybe he uh, didn't have the courage to be like Amy Lincoln Bold and speak up for truth. He actually followed his friends and so doing something. And now he's paying the price today um, for it. And so he's been suspended, uh, which is, it's a learning experience, right? I think we learn from all experiences in life. No one is perfect. And um, so, yeah, some, that kind of like made me think um, about our kids, our children. You know, some of you are parents in here, some of you are not. But I also think, you know, just if we didn't read this chapter today, like you and I, if we didn't hear about the boldness of Amulek, and yesterday, if we didn't hear about the boldness of Alma, if we didn't even open our scriptures at all, what we wouldn't know anything about being bold, right? Um, and then I think about, because my, I think about the young people, this wicked and perverse generation that he's talking about, as sometimes can be among our children because they haven't learned a thing. They haven't been brought into the scriptures. They are not reading the scriptures, so how will they know? I mean, that's just my thoughts. So sometimes when we are not deep into our daily study, sometimes we just let a little bit of room for Satan to come into our lives. And, you know, we learn by reading because we read about the faith of these great people like Amy, look like Alma. And we want our faith to be strong like them. We know it's not, but it'll help us strive to be that way. Now, the generation I worry about is the rising generation, the ones who are not immersed in scripture, who are immersed in everything else but scripture, all things of God. So I like to think, I liken it to the scripture. Alma and Amulek were experiencing that kind of thing in their time too, where people were just not engaged in the word of God at all, and it was leading them down another path. So, I mean, I'm not perfect. You know, my kids are not always reading scriptures, and that worries me. Um, 
So, I mean, that's just a, a thought to think about. Um, if you have any more comments about that, then, you know, please share. But these are just the things that come to my mind right now. Um, if you have more to talk about, please drop it in the comments. I'll just see on my list. Okay, so, all right, part of our scripture study. This is another um, tip. When you study and you learn and you understand, like we understand now what this chapter is about, then you go and apply so the question is, for application, is how does this story apply to us today? And whatever you got out of the, our reading today, I mean, follow your own spirit. I'm just giving you some points and advice and explanations, but I really hope that you are trying to find the answers for yourself as we study. And uh, I'd like to think that when you do that by the spirit, you will be better able to apply the teachings to yourself you know what that means like like live what you're learning <laughs> so if today it is to i don't know um be bold like epilect then you've got to go out there and be bold not easy but this is the whole idea the application part okay belinda you said it's frustrating i would love to interact and i can't talk quickly enough um, I might have to bring you in on, on a, a call one day. Maybe we'll try tomorrow. You can come in. I'll bring you in when it's comments time or something like that. But still, po post your comments, Belinda, because, you know, people are still able to come in there and, and um, you know, answer and share thoughts and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, so we're coming to the end. Um, to close, please share your thoughts and even if it's just not fully related to what we've discussed today and it's something to do with an experience or, you know, then don't be afraid to share. Be bold like Amulek and share your testimony even though you're going to look weird doing it. Who cares? And on this page, I've already mentioned it before, we respect each other. Now there's no room for mocking, there's no room for finding fault. That doesn't happen this page. It may happen in every other page and I don't care, but it doesn't happen in this page. Um, in this page we love one another and we respect each other. So don't be afraid to, to um, you know, share your own thoughts and comments. If you m missed, um, like we're just going to finish soon, if you missed out a portion of it, go back and watch it from the beginning. There's a lot of truth in the things that we read about um, and the Spirit will teach you in your own timing. You may not learn it now. Come back later and, and watch it. I watch it all the time. Like when I'm sitting here, when I, before I go to bed, I always put it on. I actually shut my husband out. I said, sorry, I'm listening to <laughs> No, I like listening to it because it's quite uplifting to hear um, the words of God, you know. It tells you all the things that you should do. And that's the other thing about it. The application part is really you just go and do what the scriptures just told you to do. You know, don't even think about it. Don't be afraid. Have no fear. It's just like Amy like, bang, angel told him, off he went. He didn't say, oh, hang on, I've got an appointment. Uh, I've got some things to do before. Hang on, I'll come back to you and I'll, I'll sort you out later. No, he didn't do that. He, he said, okay, I'll do it. I'll listen to the angel. You know, that word that starts with oh, obedience. Yeah, sometimes that word can be a struggle, especially in your everyday life. You know, sometimes we do get a bit comfortable in our lives. We you know it's not convenient for us, so we take a bit of time doing it. So, um, yeah, don't get too complacent, please. Um, You'll find out what happens to people when they get complacent. And even be aware of the things that we say, because we're going to go into Zezrom's like side of things too. And just the things that are said, man. Even the things that were said today in the chapter, like, man, who says those things? <laughs> oh, they are brave. Um, sometimes they crack me up when I read about them and I think, oh. But at the same time, I know that that can be us too. Don't, don't you worry. 
Now we're talking about these people thinking that, oh, they are the enemy, and then next minute, that's us. We are doing what they just... <laughs> and so it's good to read your scriptures, Daddy, so you cannot be those people. You know, don't be that guy. You know, don't be that egg. I always say Satan is the egg, because he is. And he just wants us to be miserable. So, you know, try your hardest not to let him. And, and your families too. If you're miserable, then your families, it, it rubs off. That influence, it rubs off. If you're happy, you rub off, um, uh, you know, that good influence on others. If you're miserable, you know, just fight it. Do everything in your power to do it. Get rid of it. You know, it hits you and people that love you around you. And, um, yeah, so thank you, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow. Um, Alma 11 tomorrow, we'll hear a little bit about Zezrom and... Just drop any comments. Um, even I'd like to hear if how your daily progression. I like to hear about your progression. How is all this helping in some way? And if it's not, then tell me. I, you know, it doesn't bother me. I still keep doing it. Um, but yeah, let's just see, man. Every time we read scriptures, man, the power, the power is there, and then that spirit just stays with you for the little bit longer that you. You know that you invite it to be there i mean i i just think i'm invincible every time i finish reading my scriptures i always feel invincible and that's the feeling that i want in a crazy world like the one we're living in now this is the feeling that i want and i know that there's people out there that crave for that feeling of the spirit and this is one way that we can share so please if you know that there are others that would be that could benefit from just being in here and listening or don't don't keep that to yourself <laughs> share that joy with others it's a great feeling um so i'm grateful for this opportunity and i i feel so inspired when the spirit is here with us and i love that we are reaching out to people everywhere people who are ready to hear um they've heard the world but they're looking for something different um so yeah please share Anyway, thank you, everybody. I've probably said this like three times now to close, but I don't know. The Spirit just wants me to stay here. But anyway, I'll let you go. I know you've got busy things to do, and I've got to take care of things. I've got a, a few things to do now. Cook dinner, you know, the same old. All right, but we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Okay, before we go, let's have a prayer. Close your eyes. Thank you. Tried my best to listen with Edith. Oh, precious. Give Edith a big hug. We love her. And don't worry, Lani. You know, just you can come back in your own time and listen to it. This is the great thing about technology. You don't always have to be here. You can listen later on when you do have, have time to do it, okay? And it's going to be on this page forever. So even if you don't have time today or next week, it's whenever you want to, okay? Um, love you guys. Take care. Please be aware of those um, those enemy that we read about today, you know, the lawyers and all that stuff. Yeah, watch out for them. They're everywhere. <laughs> but be brave and bold like Amulek. Okay, and I'm praying for each one of you. Love you all. Uh, and I'll say the closing prayer. All right, close your eyes. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this wonderful time that we have had together. And and we're grateful for our scriptures and grateful for the great story of Amulek and, and Alma and grateful for the testimony of Amulek and help us also to be bold like him and have courage to do what is right and to be obedient and forgive us, Father, for many wrongdoings and help us to strengthen ourselves in our faith and help us be aware of um, those who are the enemy of our day. And we pray, Father, for them and, and for each other and help us to love one another and serve each other. And we're mindful of those who are in need. Please help us to reach out to them. And we pray for them and their families. And we're grateful for this time and our blessings. And close this meeting with thy blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Love you all. We'll talk tomorrow. Bye.